Hey everyone, welcome to Culture Shock. Um, today we are doing an interview uh, with the man, the myth, the legend, Jake Williams, um, who oh, also man. goes by Moga Jake on Twitter and I think probably every other form of social media. Jake, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Thank you so feels, much for joining us today. Feels like quite an intro. I don't know if I'm a legend. Uh, I would exactly. definitely say within our, uh, we're not a household, I don't know what to call us, but like within our rankings, I guess, yeah, you, know, you definitely are. Because, um, uh, you know, you and uh, Alex and I all listen to um, a podcast that that's kind of how we met, basically. Um, and I'll actually get to that part a little bit later, but I want to kind of start off with some of the more, I guess, traditional questions. Um, how long have you been doing this for? Um, for as long as I can remember, to be honest, uh, not like super prolifically until maybe a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've been like doodling, uh, for pretty much ever. Awesome. And so did you, uh, you know, take like an art class in school or did you go to school for it or is this all 100% self-taught? Uh, I wish I was 100% self-taught, but no, I did go to school. Um, it was a fun time, actually. What did you go to school for it? Um, I went to Edinburgh University uh, up in Edinburgh, PA. Oh, it's cool, a pretty cool. nice place uh, once you get used to all of the snow, because it's in the snow belt. Right, um, right. The exact opposite problem that I have here in New Orleans. Yeah. It's uh, it's fun, though. Um, I really liked going to school up there. Uh I know it's not like for everybody, um, but it was really, really uh, cool the way that they, uh, they're really big on like um, making sure that you're like really well-rounded. Uh, so I learned a little about a lot of stuff, That's uh, cool. which is nice for someone like me who's indecisive. <laughs> so I get to try out a whole lot of stuff before I pick what I want to do. So then what was cool. your, what was your major there? I was a graphic design major. Um, but like towards the end, I really wish I had been an animation major because I took a few classes and it was like really fun. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's kind of what I've done last minute here for myself too, which is like adding on different uh, things. Like as you kind of discover stuff, I think that's one of the cool things about colleges and colleges that kind of encourage kind of exploration. Um, so then uh, the program that I'm looking at you using right now, is this what you, you know, use on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, yeah, it's what I've been using a lot lately. Um, it's called Procreate. Uh, it's for iPad. Cool. Uh, I actually just found out the other day that um, that movie It that just came out, the guy who did the storyboards mm -hmm. for it used uh, this program. That's cool. Which is surprising because uh, I haven't really heard too much about it before I started using it, which I guess is the way most things are. Right. So what, um, like no pun intended on this, I, I realized this as I wrote the question, but what to you is the draw to this program? Like, you know, there's definitely, I mean, obviously I'm not an, uh, an artist, but like I've seen many people use different programs, um, you know, so, and I know that I think everyone's heard of Photoshop, yeah, or illustrator and stuff. So what's the thing that draws you to this one? Um, I actually, uh, I used to use Photoshop actually a whole lot. Um, but, uh, the tablet I had was, uh, an Intuos 4. So it didn't have like a, the screen to it. And I found myself getting really frustrated, um, trying to, uh, basically like retrain your, your uh, hand-eye coordination because you have to like look at the screen, uh, look at the screen in front of you while drawing on something that's right, like, right. below you. Um, oh man! So I really wanted to learn how to do something with a different kind of tablet, but I didn't want to get another Wacom because they're crazy, crazy expensive, and I was really, really yeah, impatient and didn't want to wait that long. <laughs> uh, so I got an iPad, and Procreate, as far as I'm aware, is the best option on iPad, but I could be wrong. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot about what's what's all out there. So do you, like, anytime that there's something new, um, do you kind of try and dabble in it to compare things? 
Uh, yeah, um, it's always pretty cool to learn how to do new stuff. Um, before I started uh, using um, Procreate, I had done a lot of uh, hand-drawn stuff, um, or traditional, I guess I should say. Um, so like watercolor stuff, um, pen and ink stuff, a bunch of different like mediums, you know, just to sort of uh, try some new things. Because it's always fun to learn new stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. I totally agree with you on on that. So for for when you're creating, you know, what is your process? Um, well, the style thing uh, tends to just sort of happen on its own. Um, I see a lot of like people, especially when they're just starting out, they're like, "How do I develop a style or whatever?" Um, but that's just sort of like a byproduct of how you tend to work. I mean, you can sort of try to replicate other people's stuff if you are really determined to do so, but um, just sort of finding your own style just kind of happens naturally, I've found. Um, but uh, I just kind of always sort of start with the same sort of building blocks um, mm -hmm. just because it's easiest for me to sort of uh, make the decisions that you have to make when you're putting something together. Um, it's kind of like a puzzle. Um, one of the ways that I work uh, is I will um, probably hear in a minute if you're watching the uh, thing I'm drawing. But um, I do a thing like uh, called line sculpting where you just sort of, it's kind, it feels kind of like um, sculpting like uh, clay where you're sort of taking away the parts that you know are not what you're looking for, and you're sort of adding to it until you kind of like find the line that you want. Um, so I don't know if that really <laughs> no, that makes was a super sense. good way to answer your question. No, that, but That makes perfect sense, at least to me. That was, that was cool. Like I hadn't really thought of it in that sense. Um, so that was a interesting uh, like spin, I guess you could say, on it. Um, so then something that I have noticed or something that I had rather noticed back when I first started, you know, seeing you on, you know, the social media um, uh, platforms, I think probably Twitter was the first place, but I saw that you do like a drawing a day. Yeah, um, th that actually started from uh, the Game Grumps. Um, they did a thing in one of their episodes about... Uh, uh, what did, I think it was Dan maybe called it like don't break the chain or something like that um, and it's basically like you just do a thing every day um, and the idea is every day that you continue to do the thing it's like you add a link to a chain hmm. and as it goes on you're more and more incentivized to sort of uh, to not break it by continuing to do that thing and uh, I, for a long time had always like, I always tend to like get into a slump of like, man, I should draw. I haven't drawn in a while. And then eventually I just kind of decided, well, I'm just going to do this thing and it'll force me to draw. Um, so that way I will continue to practice and I won't feel bad for not having done stuff in a while. Cause I'll have done it like every day. Um. Uh, and That's cool. so I've been doing that for uh, a long time now, <laughs> it feels like. Yeah, because I've noticed that be... you've, you've passed a full year, I think, at this point, right? Yeah, it's been a couple of years now, I think, okay. actually. Um, it'll be a thousand days in oh, like wow. a month or something I don't like know, that. I don't know why I thought it was like 600. So yeah, man, I I guess I have not been reading numbers properly. Um, So... Okay, so you already, within that answer, answered my next question, which was what inspired you to do it. So then what would you say are some of the difficulties that you've run into with this? I guess at this point, it's almost more of a habit. So maybe now there aren't as many issues, but I guess maybe more of when you were starting, like, did you have, you know, motivation or like inspiration? You know, kind of what are some of the pitfalls, I guess, of, of, of make taking on a challenge like that? 
Uh, well, the biggest thing I've run into doing this has just been like finding stuff to draw. Uh, it's really difficult, it turns out, to draw something new every day when you don't want to like keep drawing the same thing over and over. Um, so I have turned to the internet, uh, as I tend to do with stuff like this, and I go to uh, Reddit. Um, there's a subreddit called uh, Reddit Gets Drawn where people post pictures like all the time. That's and they're cool. like, hey, how about you draw my friend or whatever for some right. reason? Right. Um, so that's always fun practice. And then there's a bunch of other like places with uh, photography or gesture drawings and tools of that nature online that you can go and check out and do cool stuff with. So that's always a fun thing to do when you have no ideas like I often do. Right. Yeah, that's uh, something that I've always kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, run, in, run into an issue with when trying to get into some sort of ritual of creating, you know, having a resource that you can just go out to a place and there's infinite things that people can give you to say, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, draw this, draw that, you know, and, you know, you have somebody to kind of he- keep, ooh, keep it moving along. There you go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool. I dig it a lot. Plus it's, uh, always nice to sort of you tend to meet people that way too uh right who are into doing the same thing you're into doing uh which is pretty cool something that we talked about kind of near the beginning um of you know kind of like how we met which i think is a very good segue of you know from what you just said um is you know we both listen to a podcast called uh whatever we call it which is uh hosted by terrence wiggins and my cousin jeb black um and I've noticed that, you know, for uh, many different things, but also especially for this, this is kind of how I found out, you know, about you and stuff. Um, <clears throat> you draw fan art, um, but, uh, you know, taking something from within this podcast and, you know, creating it. Um, and when you do something like that, do you find it easier to get the inspiration in kind of like listening to it and seeing something and saying that's I want to show my interpretation of it or is it easier when it's like you know the reddit thing where someone already has a picture and you're kind of drawing something based off of an already you know physically like tangible thing um it has pros and cons uh it's definitely easier to start when you have some sort of reference to go by Um, But it can also be a little bit more difficult for me, at least, because I'm always really stressing about uh, trying to get it to look accurate or whatever. Um, Mm. Because if it's not, like, perfectly accurate, then I feel bad. (laughs) Um, But with, like, fan art and stuff like that for podcasts, it's always pretty fun, too, because uh, it's usually from something that you come up with, like, on your own. So right. No one can really tell you, oh, you did that wrong or whatever. Uh, so you can have a lot more fun with uh, your interpretation of it, which is uh, one of the appealing parts of doing stuff that way. Based on that, though, right, for you know, having something that you know is kind of like no one can tell you that it's wrong kind of thing, when you're listening to something such as whatever we call it, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of goofs in, the, in each episode. And I think some uh, episodes become a little bit more obvious as to what the main thing is because, you know, sometimes they get going on a topic for like 20, 30 minutes, like, you know, John Wayne for Sugar Eggs or Arthur P. Lizard Man. Um, but, you know, like when you listen to something like that, you know, how what's your process on finding like the gem that you go, that's what I want to, you know, bring, bring to life. That's the moment. Uh, there isn't really a process for it. <laughs> uh, I wish I was more insightful, but it's really generally, uh, generally just like whatever makes me laugh the most, um, or whatever I think would be funny looking to draw in cases like that. Um, so like if I come up with something in my head as I'm listening to it. And I'm like, Oh man, that would be really funny to see. Uh, then I'll draw it. If it's not like 
too crazy difficult for me to do and frustrating. Because <laughs> uh, in that case, I tend to just give up. But um, yeah, it's normally whatever like is funniest to me, I'll draw. Um, especially because uh, if there's like dialogue involved, I tend to go back and re-listen to those parts over and over again. And if it's really funny, it'll make me laugh consistently for the entirety of me re-listening to everything, uh, which is just another way to extend the fun of your favorite medium. Yeah, I mean, you know, there like I think like every single time there's an episode, you know, and the the picture, uh, you know, of of the episode goes up, you know, um, there have been so many texts between you know like Alex or Jeb or both, you know, being like, God damn, nailed it again. You know, um, especially like for me, like the Arthur P, the Arthur P. Lizardman one is one of my favorite ones you've ever done. Um, just like, one. like it's funny the whole time, but the slow sinking, even like in, in the, the drawn form it like, you know, as opposed to like, it, you know, when you have something that is, I guess you could say like a slow motion, I feel like sometimes when it's not animated, you kind of lose that. But like, I felt like that was perfectly shown. And then when he just falls over, it was genius. Like I laughed. I still laugh about that one to this day. That and the, you're my baby one. (laughs) But like, and uh, I also, so you were talking earlier though that you had done some uh, animation while you were at school. And you also did an animated short for the, for that same podcast for, you know, whatever we call it recently. Uh, she's gonna kill you. <laughs> she puts up with a lot of bullshit because, like, I think where most people do that once, we're talking like the song fades, <laughs> and you can see her body start to tense up as if to say, "Don't do it," <laughs> and then it'd be like, "Bing, bing, 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 ba ding, ba ding," and I'd be like, "Grandpa, <laughs> is this what everyone twerked to when you were young?" <laughs> yes. The year was 2017, and the whole world was twerking. Was there a specific moment where you went, "That's that's that should be one that should be animated"? You know, when you heard that, you know that moment. Uh, normally, when I do them, they almost always in my head are like as a cartoon, and I just kind of pick the funniest frame to draw. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't really have any super great animation software at the moment. Uh, but I'm always looking for some. What do you use right now? Right now, I use, like, for the one that I did do, um, I used uh, just Photoshop. There's uh, some decent, like, rudimentary kind of stuff for Photoshop, mostly for, like, making GIFs and stuff, or GIFs, or however you prefer to say it. Uh, um, GIFs. I mean, you know, the first word is graphics. Like, you know, I don't care what <laughs> anyone you. else tells me. Someone who it's agrees graphics. with things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's okay for like lining up frames and mm-hmm. uh, setting up like your, your big motions and your keyframes and stuff. But I don't really have any sort of uh, like video editing stuff to sort of composite together uh, the shots when they're done. Um, so that's mainly the the big hassle for me uh, right now is just trying to find something that lets me do all that without being so expensive that I don't want to buy it. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Cause I'm a huge cheapskate. Um, it's, it's always fun to do like animation type stuff in my opinion. Um, it's pretty like time consuming stuff, but it's usually really rewarding. Um, I enjoy it a lot and I wish I could do it more. Um, but uh, I tend to just be really lazy. So that's kind of why I don't do it as much as I probably should. Um, Because I tend to just kind of get caught up with doing this sort of drawing a day thing, and then I'm like, "Uh, I don't want to spend that much time animating and then going and drawing. So I don't know. I guess it just comes down to me being super lazy, but it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, If I could, I would animate a whole lot more of the funny bits i actually have like a whole list of stuff i want to animate from that podcast in particular but uh i'm just too lazy to do it right now so maybe i'll get around to it one day you had said that you know you listen to podcasts going to work and stuff like that but i've also seen that sometimes you draw things um 
you know, like that are people that you see in meetings and stuff like that. Um, oh, no, that's actually just all people from Reddit. Um, I oh, so it's like while you're in a meeting, you're yeah, like while I'm that. in a meeting, I will just go down the list of whoever is on Reddit gets drawn that day, and I will just draw every single person on the list until the meeting is over. Uh, because it tends to happen, the meetings tend to happen like in the mornings, and mm-hmm. I'm usually really tired. And I'm one of those people where, like, if I'm not doing anything and I'm tired, right. then I'm just going to fall asleep. Oh, I hear um, you on that. Especially, like, I was always that kid in school who was, like, doodling constantly. So um, if I'm doing something like that, it'll help me stay awake so that I'm not being rude and falling asleep in front of all of the people I work with. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I hear you there. I That's why I can't do any morning classes because, like, I know that no matter what happens – I'm probably just going to fall asleep in that class, and I, I feel terrible about that. If someone were to look at this video or at something that you do on Twitter, and you know they go, oh, you know, I want to be able to do that when I grow up, or I don't know, maybe even if they're an adult, and they just go, you know, I used to doodle all the time, and I gave up on it. I should get back on that. You know, like, what would be kind of like advice that you would give to people who kind of want to do the same thing? Uh, just do it. <laughs> uh, it sounds really like, uh, impersonal and like rude when you say it that way, but that's really the best way to go about it is to just do it. Um, cause like I was saying before, uh, I would always have that feeling of like, oh man, I really want to do drawings and I haven't drawn in a while and right. stuff like that. Um, but like one day, like it's not going to get done until you decide to just pick up a pencil and just do it uh so that's really the best advice i can give for something like that um is just you know just do it and a lot of the time people like uh when i'm drawing in those meetings and stuff at work Mm. uh i'll hear people like oh i wish i could do that or i can barely draw a stick figure and blah 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 (laughs) but um i found that it's it like it's much more intimidating than it act- like it seems more intimidating than it actually is. Um, I usually relate drawing to just like playing an instrument. Like mm-hmm. when you're first starting, it's not going to be what you want it to be. And even now I'm still like not anywhere close to where I wish I were. Um, but it's just a matter of like practicing and staying dedicated and putting in the effort to, improve and you'll get better with time hopefully ideally uh i don't know if i have i like to think that i have (laughs) but um yeah it's just a matter of like you know putting in the work doing the doing the thing awesome um do you take commissions at this point or you know are you like you know whether it's for drawing or for um doing some of like the graphic designing work you know like freelance kind of stuff you know do you do uh any of that sort of thing um i do here and there but uh i feel like i honestly should do like portrait commissions or something just so that it gives me more things to draw rather than having to go to reddit every day right Um, and you get paid that's always yeah that too it's always nice but i'm always like really self-conscious about this sort of thing um because like sometimes i'll do a thing and it's like oh man that was great i loved that and the way it came out and then like no one seems to care but then it'll be like oh i'll just put this up just to say that i did it for the day and then like everyone's like this is the most amazing thing that you've ever done and i'm like well (laughs) no i don't really know what direction i'm going in so right Um, yeah um And so, you know, um, on a slightly changing gears, um, but kind of looking at, you know, all that we're doing here, or sorry, not we, you're doing it. I'm not the one doing the work. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, I've also noticed recently you've started doing um, like time lapses, um, for lack of a better term, or like speed throughs more. I don't know what, what's the word that you would use for that? You know, like when you take like a drawing that you've done throughout the day and then you 
speed it up like super quick so that people kind of see the different things you've been making each day. Uh, yeah, that's just like a time lapse. That's uh, a product of using this app because um, it has like built in features where it records what you're doing like as you do it. That is pretty cool. It's always pretty neat to see stuff like that come together without having to wait for the 20 minutes or however long I spend doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. Video stuff is pretty fun. Um, I have like light experience working with it, um, but every time I've done stuff with it, it's always been a fun time. Uh, so getting moving pictures on the internet uh, is a fun fun time for me. Going back a step again towards animation, um, you, know, you said that that was something that you kind of explored while you were in college. Um, what was you know the type of courses that you were taking there that you know kind of uh, spoke to you? Like you know, I don't I don't know what uh, the different types of courses there are for that kind of track. Uh, well, as a design major. Most of the stuff I was doing was related to graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, all of them were pretty fun. But the way that uh, Edinburgh is set up is that they always want you to take other, like, disciplines. Um, so, like, when, you, when you're an art major there, uh, you basically have to, like, get accepted twice to the school, it feels like, uh, mm -hmm. for lack of a better explanation. Uh, cause once you start, you're just like an art major. Um, but then you have to, in order to get into like your, your, uh, specific genre, I guess, of right. art, you have to like qualify. And sometimes there aren't, uh, a whole lot of spots. So you kind of have to go through what's essentially like an, uh, application process, um, only if there aren't a whole lot of spots, though, does that become, like, a problem. Uh, right. So that was, like, one of the reasons I didn't switch to animation is because at that particular it school, like animation is... a whole is, other thing? Like a whole yeah, other process, it's really, basically. really competitive up there. Um, and I did not have the self-confidence to be like, oh, yeah, this is what I'll do, um, for fear that I would have made a horrible mistake. <laughs> um, but, uh, so... Before that point, you have to do uh, basically like the gen eds of art. Um, so uh, we had to do like um, drawing and painting and uh, like um, sculpture, that sort of thing. Oh, that's cool. Um, so we learn a little bit about a lot of things. Uh, I guess because the idea is that like you never create anything in a vacuum. So huh. whenever you're making something, it'll probably touch on at least one other discipline that you might not have expected. So to sort of get you used to those different things, they try to expose you to a bunch of different places that you might not have uh, expected to go. Um, which is fun because I would never have taken like a metal making class before, but Whoa, that's I cool. mean, I've blacksmithed technically <laughs> not that's very awesome. good, but I've done it and it's fun. And I would never have done that if like it wasn't a requirement. It's super fun. Uh, I only did it for like one semester. So it was mostly mm -hmm. just like little jewelry things, but like I got to make a ring and that's cool. That's awesome. I made um like a uh like a brooch like a pin situation and that was pretty cool um so yeah uh little stuff like that is always like really great to sort of get exposed uh exposed to um just because like you know it's always nice to try new things you never know what you're gonna like until you get out there and do it if someone's out there trying to figure out what uh, like school to go for or school to go to for art, whether it's illustration, animation, graphic design. Um, you know, do you have like, uh, 
I guess it's more of like, for instance, like for you, what was it about, you know, your school in particular that made it stand out against other schools, you know, so, so kind of, I guess, what helps people find the right match? Um, for me, it was like, uh, well, one of my professors said it, uh, in my favorite way, which was, uh, at this school, you're going to get like the same level of education as you would at a super expensive school, but it's not as expensive. So people won't like care as much when you try to apply. You know what I mean? Like it will seem less, uh, less than a really big school, um, or like a really prestigious school, but you're like, you're learning the same things. So it, it really just depends on like, for me at least, it depended on like my budget and like where I was willing to go, like how far away from home and stuff. Um, so um, it really just depends on like uh, sort of having, I, I don't want to say like knowing exactly what you want to do because even I still don't know that, but um, just sort of having like a general idea of like what it is that you want to get out of school and then looking for a school that can sort of fill that that uh requirement for you um because it's always going to be like there's always going to be pros and cons to wherever you go and then it's just a matter of like finding which things are the most important to you uh and then getting a feel for like what it's like when you get there and what it's going to be like if like if you're going away to school what it'll be like to live there and that sort of thing is always a decent factor. One of my professors said it perfect. Uh, I tend to fall back on this dude in particular. He was my drawing professor. Um, and he's like one of those teachers where it's like, oh man, you got so-and-so he's the best. But then like when you're in his class, it's like, everyone lied to me. He's the worst. <laughs> um, but it's like one of those, you look back on it and it's like, oh, okay, I see what everyone was talking about now. Um, so like for, our like big midterm for our drawing class we had to do an 80 hour drawing and we were like that's impossible no one is ever going to spend 80 hours on a drawing ever in anyone's life um and he was like you guys laugh at me but like when you start it and it's time to like turn it in you're gonna be like wait i need more time <laughs> on an 80 yeah. hour drawing um so there's always like when you're when you're making something, uh, especially if you have like some sort of reference or whatever, there's always something that you can fix. Um, and another source of inspiration for me is uh, an artist by the name of Jake Parker. Um, and he has this adage called uh, finish not perfect, where huh. when you're trying to make something, it's more important that you are like done making the thing because you can spend forever attempting to make something and it'll never get done until you decide, okay, I'm going to finish this at this time. And after that, then it's done no matter what. Man, um, that, I definitely resonate with that. Well, sorry, what was the quote one more time? The, the finish, not what the finish, not finish, perfect? not perfect is what he says. I like that. He's super cool. Um, you should check him out on like Twitter and Instagram or whatever. Uh, he's the guy, if you've ever seen like people do those like inktober drawings and stuff, he's the guy mm -hmm. who like started doing that. Thanks for you know for joining us here uh, today, Jake. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I enjoy your art immensely, so this was a really fun like exercise to be a part of. Um, so you know, if people want to find you and your art, uh, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me at Mocha Jake M O K A J A K E on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I might have a Tumblr still somewhere, but that's usually my username for like most things. So if I'm somewhere, uh, look for that first and that's how you'll find me. <laughs> awesome. If people want to, you know, reach out for, you know, that commission work or, you know, whether it's graphic design or drawing or anything like that, is, is it the same place that they can go to reach you or is there like a, a business email for you? Nah. Same thing. Uh, you can just find me on Twitter or whatever. Send me, slide into my DMs. <laughs> Send me something if you're interested. And I'll probably answer, maybe, probably. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, 
like I said, it's been a pleasure. Like I, I love watching this. This was a lot of fun to, to, to watch while we were, while we were going. Um, well, uh, that's going to be it for us on this episode of culture shock. Uh, once again, I'm Colin Parker and I'm Jake Williams and we'll see you guys on the next episode. See ya. I can't do that one. That's that one's Jeb's. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll say, ah, oh, shit. I'll come up with a better, I'll come up with a better sign off. That's my promise for this episode. Um, all right. Bye. Bye. Bye.